This is one video you won't want to miss. Before we start, we remind you that you find our best strategies on our webpage. Mind you, even though the strategies in this video are great, they are not our best. Okay, let's get back to our five free and proven swing strategies. First, let's start by explaining swing trading. Swing trading is a dynamic strategy that involves holding a tradable asset for one or more days with the aim of profiting from price changes or swings. That's right, we're talking about capitalizing on short-term price movements. In this video, we only look at the stock market and we backtest the ETF that tracks S&P 500, SPY. You can most likely also trade the futures contract. Unlike day trading, where positions are opened and closed within the same day, swing trading positions are held for longer periods, but not quite as long as buy and hold investment strategies. So you get the best of both worlds. The potential for big gains without the stress of constantly monitoring the markets. We aim to exploit the long-term rising trend in the stock market, but we buy on short-term weakness and panics. The chart shows you an example. We want to buy when the price deviates from the longer trend and sell when the market is strong. We buy weakness and sell strength. Okay, now let's jump to the trading rules of our first strategy. In the first strategy, we want to enter when the price has dropped from a recent high. We calculate a band that is based on the 25-day average of the difference of the daily highs and lows. When SPY closes below the band deducted from the 10-day high and IBS is lower than 0.3, we go long. We have explained the IBS indicator in a separate video which contains three free strategies. We also need to make a rule for the exit. Because we want to sell on strength to exploit the mean reversion effect, we sell when today's close is above yesterday's high. Let's show you a trade example. The red line in the chart shows the 10-day high. The blue line is calculated by using the average range of high and low and deduct it from the 10-day high. The lower pane in the chart shows the IBS indicator. We buy when SPY closes below the blue line and when the IBS indicator is below 0.3. Green arrows show when we buy and red arrows when we sell. Let's find out how the strategy performed from 1993 until today. We back-tested the strategy in AMI Broker, and our starting capital of 100000 in year 1993 grows to $1.75 million in 2023. This is an annual return of 10%, slightly better than buy and hold despite being invested just 18% of the time. Because of less time spent in the market, the max drawdown is also substantially lower at 23% versus buy and holds 55%. Thus, we might also argue the risk-adjusted return is 55%. We calculate the risk-adjusted return by taking the annual return of 10% and divide it by 0.18, which is the percentage of time spent in the market. Let's go to our second strategy for the day and its trading rules. We buy at the close on Monday if the close is lower for the second day in a row. We exit when the close is higher than yesterday's high. The name of the strategy is perhaps better known as Turnaround Tuesday because the market often rallies on Tuesdays after a week Monday. Let's look at some trade samples. The green arrows show Mondays where the close is down for the second time in a row, and the red arrows are when we sell on strength. All five trades shown here are profitable, but it is, of course, not always the case because trading also involves losing trades. Let's look at the bigger picture and look at the equity curve of the strategy since 1994 until today. A 100,000 investment would have compounded annually at 8.2% from 1993 until today. The equity curve rises steadily, and the equity would have grown to 1.058 million by today. Not too bad for such a simple strategy. There are 271 trades that on average is invested just four days, thus making you invested just 11% of the time, and hence avoiding the worst drawdowns. Max drawdown is at only 16%. Again, the risk-adjusted return is very high at 74%. Let's go to our third proven swing strategy. We buy SPY when the close is lower than the low of the previous five trading days. That's it. We buy on a five-day low. As usual, we sell when the close ends higher than yesterday's high. In this slide, we see five trading examples, all of them winners. Obviously, not all turn out to be winners, but the win rate is very high, as is typical for mean reversion strategies. If we look at the equity curve of the strategy, it's hard not to be impressed of such a simple strategy. You started with 100,000 in 1993 and end up with 1.4 million today despite being invested just 21% of the time. As you can see, the trading performance is really good. You are invested only 21% of the time and you still get a return that equals buy and hold. You take advantage of the ebb and flow in the market to get a risk-adjusted return of 43%. Again, it shows that simplicity works in the stock market. As a matter of fact, simplicity trumps complexity. Let's go to today's fourth strategy. This one is a bit different compared to the first three because it's mainly based on volatility and to a lesser extent mean reversion. 
These are the trading rules. We buy when today's range is lower than the daily range the previous six trading days, and the close must be above the 200-day moving average. The 200-day moving average serves as a trend filter. We only want to take trades when the market is bullish. Yet again, we exit when today's close ends above yesterday's high. The green arrow shows a day when the daily range is lower than the previous six trading days and above the 200-day moving average. Thus, we go long at the close. The next day, S&P 500 rallies, and the close is higher than yesterday's high. We exit at the close for a nice 0.58% gain. Let's look at how your equity would have grown if you traded all signals from 1993 until today. We start with 100,000 USD in 1993 and let it compound until today. As you can see, the equity shows an upward slope. There are a few setbacks along the way, but overall, the strategy performs pretty well. The statistics are not as good as the previous three strategies, but as you'll see at the end of the video, the strategy complements the other strategies well. Let's go to our last back-tested and proven swing trading strategy. Our last strategy is somewhat different than the others. This is a strategy we made six years ago, and it has lately worked better than ever. The trading rules are very simple. Today's high must be higher than the high of the last 10 days, and the IBS indicator must be below 0.15. If both are true, we buy the close. We use the same sell signal as in all the four other strategies, when the close is higher than yesterday's high. Let's show you a few trade examples. The seven trades turn out five profitable ones in our sample. We buy on a weak day when SPY closes in the bottom of its daily range, but it still managed to set a new 10-day high earlier in the trading session. The equity curve is pretty good, right? It's the strategy with the fewest trades, but the slope is up. It was only 161 trades, and the average gain was 0.6% per trade. You were invested less than a week on average, and the annual return was 3.24%. But that low number is due to being invested only 7% of the time. However, the strategy has the lowest drawdown at only 8%. We have now presented you five free and proven swing strategies. But let's go on to do the final back test of the day. We trade all strategies at the same time, but we allocate 100% of the equity to one position, thus ignoring buy signals if we already have a position. Because we use the same sell signal in all five strategies, there are no conflicts with the exits. When we add all five strategies, we get a lot more trades. The trade sample shown here indicates that you in some periods get many trades. But how do the five strategies perform together? Let's backtest and find out. Your initial 100,000 in 1993 would have grown to 5.3 million. That's the beauty of compounding returns. It snowballs. Remember, the scale on the right side is logarithmic, not linear, and thus we see relative changes. The five strategies combined would have had only three losing years. 2011, 2015, and 2018 were the only losing years. Perhaps better in bad years like 2008 and 2022, for example, the strategies went on to make 20.9 and 14.3%. We can assure you it feels great to make money when the market is down and our strategies only trades from the long side. Believe us, a bear market is not only good for short strategies, but also short-term long trades tend to improve because of the increased volatility. Let's sum up the statistics for all five strategies combined. The 1131 trades returned an average of 0.38%, and it amounts to a compounding return of 14.1%. That is significantly better than buy and hold, even though the strategies in total are invested only half the time. This shows the power of combining strategies, and perhaps even better, the results can be improved. But that is for another video. We stop here for today and hope you like and subscribe and visit our website to find hundreds of other strategies for many other asset classes. Good luck trading.